perfection he who has no defects yani allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah is the one who is free from any ab any defect any blemishes he is the most pure and perfect there is nothing like him subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the objection arose against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that how how is it possible that you travel from makkah to jerusalem in a very small part of the night and then returned as well it's around 950 miles one way how is it possible that you went from makkah to jerusalem in a very small part of the night and returned when this objection arose against the Prophet وسلم, by the Mushrikeen of Mecca, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in defense of the Prophet والسلام, himself responded to this objection. This objection by the Mushrikeen, Allah Almighty himself responded to this. And in his response in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, he said, Subhanalladhi asra. Pure and perfect is he who took his servant. Though my chosen servant travel from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, it is me who made this possible. You may find it through your human comprehension impossible that in a small part of the night over 900 miles were covered. In your mind rationally, Logically, it may not make sense. Allah Almighty is telling them and us that the one who made this possible is the one who is the most pure and perfect. Who is Qadir ala kulli shay. Al Qadir al Mutlaq. Allah Jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is He who made this possible for our Nabi and Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama to travel in a very small part of the night from one city to the other. From Makkah Mukarramah to Jerusalem, Bayt al Maqdis Sharif. So the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he traveled on this night journey. But it is Allah who caused for this to happen. Hence why he begins with Subhanalladhi asra bi abdi. He could have begun with Allah is the one who took his servant. He could have begun with Ar-Rahman Alladhi Asra bi Abdihi. The most merciful is he who took his servant. He began Surah Ar-Rahman with his most chosen name and from amongst the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the divine attribute of mercy. Ar-Rahman Allama Al-Quran. The most merciful is he who taught the Quran. But he did not begin this verse in Surah Al-Isra with any of those names or attributes. He did not begin with his own personal name, Allah. Rather, he began with Subhan. And Subhan is used when? It is used when answering objections. It is used to illustrate the perfection and the kamalat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi. Pure is he who took his chosen servant. Asra bi abdihi. It is narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Sayyidina Jibreel and Mikail along with thousands of angels to go to Makkah Mukarramah 
and to take the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and accompany him on this night journey from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. And Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi in his Sahih and others have mentioned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam at the time when the angel Jibreel came to him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam at that time the Prophet alayhi salat was salam was resting in the hatim of the Kaaba. We were resting in the hatim of the Kaaba. And at the time when they were resting in the hatim of the Kaaba, the angels that were present at that time, there's a car that needs moving immediately. It is blocking a driveway across one of the units. CV12UDB. Now, at this time, no car should be blocking any driveway. Car park free. Entire car park is free, exactly. So whoever has parked their car in front of the driveway across where the units are, please move your car from there. The entire car park here, there's plenty of space inside the car park. There's no excuse for someone to park their car there. So please quietly, if that individual can go and move their car and park it in a place which is appropriate. In a very small part of the night, in the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam were resting in the hatim of the Kaaba. It is well documented and narrated that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would rest, their eyes would be closed but their heart was always awake. They were absolutely aware of the entire surroundings. For no moment was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam absent from the divine court of Allah Almighty. Remember, sleep is a form of heedlessness. Sleep is a form of ghafla. And sleep, when an individual enters the state of sleeping, he becomes unaware of his surroundings. <coughs> his soul leaves his body. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam this rule was exempt for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why? For whenever their blessed eyes would close, they were always awake in reality. They were aware of everything around them. That's why Jibreel was asked by Mikael, is he awake or is he asleep? And when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam opened their blessed eyes, they said, though my eyes are shut, my heart is awake. I am aware of everything around me. The Prophet wasallam, then, at that moment in time, there were four occasions in the blessed life when the Prophet wasallam's blessed heart was taken out of their chest. Their blessed heart was taken out of their chest. During childhood, when they were playing in the gardens of Sayyidina Halima Sa'diya, Sayyidina Jibreel came, and they opened the chest of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and took out the blessed heart, the pure heart, the purest heart. This was the first occasion. It is reported the second time, Nabi alayhi salat was salam was around 12 years of age. And again this occurred. The third time, before the first revelation of the Quran, قبل نزول الوحي إن شراح الصدر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصدر الشريف. This was the third time, and the fourth time was قبل الإسراء before the my the night journey from Masjid Al Haram to Masjid Al Aqsa. The wisdom behind this, Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the Quran Al Karim. There's an entire chapter in the Quran called Suratul Inshirah. The chapter of 
the expansion or the opening. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes this moment in the Quran as well. Alam nashrah laka sadra. Did we not open for you your chest? Allah Almighty talks about the opening of the chest. Before the night journey, al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj, Nabi Salaam's blessed heart was taken out of their blessed body. We must understand the divine wisdom behind this wasn't. The divine wisdom behind this was not. Because the Prophet Salaam's heart, al Billah, was impure. No. Nabi Salaam's heart is the purest of all hearts. There is no heart like the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Almighty has not created a heart like the heart of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa His heart is the purest, the most excellent heart sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Rather, this was Allah Almighty increasing the rank and the status of the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's like when a person is in the state of wudu. He has wudu. It's zuhur salah. He reads his zuhur with that wudu. Then asr arrives. He's in wudu. He hasn't broken his wudu. No wind has passed. He hasn't vomited. He hasn't fallen asleep, unconscious, nothing. He's still in the state of wudu. But then he goes and he makes fresh wudu. The ulama write, Wudu upon wudu, ablution upon ablution is nurun ala nur, is nur upon nur. It's purification upon purification. This is how we understand when Allah Almighty ordered Sayyidina Jibreel to take out the blessed heart, it was purification upon purification. It was nur upon nur. It was increasement upon increasement. It was the love of Allah Almighty more entering into the heart of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Divine wisdom increasing. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's Habib Alayhi Salatu Wasalam's blessed heart, chest was opened and the heart was taken out. <coughs> and then when it returned, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam was then taken from Masjid Al-Haram and the journey begins to Masjid Al-Aqsa. Subhan alladhi asra bi'abdihi Allah Almighty chose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama for this night journey. He said Subhan alladhi asra bi'abdi An objection arises that why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Subhan alladhi asra bi'nabihi why didn't Allah Almighty say, Subhan alladhi asra bi rasulihi? Or Subhan alladhi asra bi habibihi? Pure is he who took his Rasul, who took his messenger, who took his prophet, who took his beloved Habib. Why did Allah Almighty say, Subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi? Pure is he who took his servant. In the court of Allah Almighty, Jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala We all stand before Allah Almighty as his servants Every one of us We are the servants of Allah Almighty Min ibadillah We are instructed and ordered To follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In all our matters and affairs That we follow his religion we follow the teachings of his Nabi and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam But we do not address Nabi Ali Salatu Wasallam as Simply merely the servant of Allah Almighty When we address the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We address him as Habibullah Nabiullah Rasulullah Sallallahu we address the Prophet with those titles that are most befitting to his rank and status. 
But Allah Almighty is going to address the Prophet والسلام, with the rank and status that is befitting to the Prophet والسلام, in his call. It's like when a respected individual in the community, he stands before the people and the people will address him. For example, the king. The king of the people, the people will say his royal highness, his majesty, the king. You will not refer to him by his name. You will call him by his titles. These are the titles, this is befitting for him. You don't go to the king and call him by his name. You will address him or the Khalifa of the Ummah by his name. You will address him by the titles which are appropriate for him. But the very same king and Khalifa, when he goes home to his mother or his wife, <coughs> she does not call him uh, king or Khalifa or he will, the mother and the wife will refer to him by his name. Will refer to him accordingly. To the relationship. <laughs> we will refer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the Nabi and Rasul of Allah Almighty and no less. But when Nabi والسلام, is referred to by Allah Almighty, he doesn't just refer to him as servant or slave. He said, Bi'abdihi. Abdihi is murakkab idafi. It is mudaf and mudaf ilayhi in the Arabic language. When murakab idafi is used, what is nakira becomes marifa. What is common becomes now specific, proper. In the Arabic grammar, in the Arabic language, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just say, pure is he who took the servant. No. Allah Almighty said, pure is he who took his chosen servant, his servant. Alama Iqbal rahmatullah alayhi. He said, how great is the servitude of our Nabi and Rasul that every one of us claimed to be the servant of Allah, but he referred to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam as his servant. He accepted Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam that this is my servant. You say you are Allah's servant. Did he accept you as his servant? You won't know this until the day of judgment, whether he accepted you as his servant or not. Allah Almighty told us in Al Quran Al Kareem, His divine speech and word that is not created, that has no beginning and no end. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most chosen servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most chosen servant of Allah Almighty, and Allah Almighty refers to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his chosen servant. <coughs> Why did Allah Almighty say by Abdihi? The word Abd was used because an objection arose. That did the Prophet والسلام's night journey and migrate and ascension to the heavens occur physically or spiritually? This waqia, this entire event of Al Isra al Mi'raj, was it a dream? Was it spiritual? Or was it actually physical? And all the great lexicographers of the Arabic language, the masters of the Arabic language, Raghib al-Asfahani, Khalil, others, Sibawe, many, all of them, Ibn Manzur, they write that Abd in the Arabic language refers to Al-Ruh Ma'al Jasad. Whenever Allah Almighty has used the word Abd in the Quran, it has always referred to soul with the body spiritual and physical not just spiritual so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi pure is he who took his servant chosen servant this answers the objection of those who say that nabi alayhi salatu wasalam seen a dream it was a dream for him it happened spiritually not physically that they did not physically travel from masjid al-haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, rather it was a dream that they seen. No, this was not a dream of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This physically took place. Sayyiduna Abdul Wahhab al-Sha'rani al-Shafi'i, the great Imam of the Shafi'is, one of the great Imams of the Sawwuf. Sayyiduna Abdul Wahhab al-Sha'rani, 
Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He writes that over 30 times the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam's mi'raj occurred spiritually. But this mi'raj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Isra, this not only was it spiritual for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, this was also physically occurred. This physically happened for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam was taken in a very small part of the night, Laylan. Remember in the Arabic language, Tanween, it gives the fa'idah of taqlil. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi Laylan. Very, very small part of the when Tanween, do zabar, do zair, or do pesh. In our language, it's do zabar, do zair, or do pesh. In the Arabic language, or the Arabs, they will understand it as Tanween. This gives to Fidul. It gives the fa'idah of qillah. Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan. Very, very small part of the night. In the very small part of the night, Allah Almighty took his habib, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Remember, over 900 miles were covered in the blink of an eye. And how was this made possible? The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam was taken upon a vehicle which is referred to as the Burak. The Burak, it is from the word Burak in the Arabic language. Burak means lightning. The Burak in its nature, this creature that Allah created, the Burak was faster than the speed of light. It's one step forward was as far as its eye could see. Hence why Nabi Ali Salatu Salam was able to travel on this night journey in such speed because they were able to cover such vast amount of land due to the Burak. It is said that the saddle of the Burak, Sina Jibreel held. The stirrup of the Burak, Sina Mikail held. Thousands of angels surrounded them and the Prophet والسلام, sat upon the Burak. It is narrated that the Burak, Sayyidina Qadi Yusuf ibn Ismail al Nabhani, the great Imam from Lebanon, he is referred to as the Mujaddid of the last century, the reviver of the last century. Sayyidina Yusuf ibn Ismail al Nabhani, he writes, that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat upon the Burak, the Burak began to shake. It began to sweat. And Sayyidina Jibreel told the Burak, relax. For there is no greater creation of Allah Almighty that will sit upon you greater than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On this night, the Burak was honored. The Burak was honored faster than any Nissan Skyline GTR or Ferrari S7. S60 or 40, whatever, with four, five, eight, nine hundred brake horsepower, can touch the Burak faster than the speed of light. And imagine traveling at such speed. You know, we sit in a car, and as soon as he hits throttle and he walks it into this mode, you see your head boom straight back into the seat. Bila Tashbi wa Tamsil, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I sat on the Burak, it's traveling at such speed. Not once did Nabi alayhi salatu salam lose control of the Burak. Full control. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given this maqam, they were given this ability. The Burak was created for the honor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And they travel and covered vast amount of lands in a very, very, very short space of time. Next Friday, inshallah, I will talk about what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam seen on this night journey. Remember, why did this occur? This occurred in the year of sadness, Amul Feel. Rasulullah salatu wasalam's blessed wife, Ummul Mu'mineen, Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, left this world. One of the biggest supporters the uncle, the father of Sayyidina Ali, Abu Talib, he passed away in this year. And when this year, the year of sadness, Allah Almighty then called his Habib. 
when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated that Jibreel was told by Allah Almighty, "Go and bring my beloved to me." فَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَا يَشْتَاقُ إِلَيْهِ Your Lord yearns to meet you. Why? Because Allah wants to meet you tonight. This is the night when Allah Almighty will unveil all His majesties and greatness upon you. And Allah tells us this in the Quran, the wisdom behind this journey. لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا Why did I take him on this night journey? So that we may show him our manifest signs. We may show him everything that we have created. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken on a tour of paradise. They were shown the fire of Jahannam. They were shown what happens to the people in Barza. They seen many things on this night and when they returned, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated all of this. And the greatest of all that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seen on this night was the divine majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Almighty grant us the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah grant us the honor to have the honor for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we resurrect in his company sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. May we all be granted his, his intercession and entry into paradise. Wa aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhru da'laya alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah jud'a alayhi.